So I'm kind of like on a, on a rant uh, this morning with uh, just doing some of these like little vlog videos. Uh, so another thing I want to kind of touch on is uh, you may have heard the term, you may not have heard the term, but everybody's got a name for these types of people. They're called gig snakes. So um, some of us in the Lehigh Valley, like we, we, we know who the gig snakes are and whatnot and we kind of keep an eye out for that type of stuff it's always comes back to like the simple phrase of like um keep your friends close keep your enemies closer almost but like they're not they're not enemies it's just people that are super hungry for uh gigs and um sometimes will like like you know theoretically or met metaphorically rather cut your throat for the for the gig and um yeah, basically, you know, th these types of players, what they'll do is like they'll they'll kind of like get real cozy with like your other bandmates and this and that, and they'll want to sit in or jam or this or that, and then next thing you know, uh, you're out and they're in, and it's more just like, you know, like they, they kind of like swooped in a little bit, like, and it was they they always try to be like under the radar. So it's always good to be aware of who those types of people are and who the the people that actually are like your friends and mutual um, like you know uh, musicians in the area are. So you know it's always good to be like friendly and cordial with everybody. You know don't ever like be hostile towards somebody unless they give you some type of reason to be hostile towards them. But you just gotta be aware of what their intentions are a lot of times. So if you have a really good gig, let's say you're playing with uh, a very popular band and um, you, they're friends with everybody, you know, like you got tons of people who are coming out to your shows and stuff like that and a lot of them probably play instruments or this or that. Some of them play your instrument, whether it's guitar, bass, you know, drums, whatever it might be. And if for whatever reason, like, you've been like rocking the bow or like there's any kind of like hostility between you and you know god forbid like the the guy who does the booking for the band forget it like you just know that y your time is limited always be like you know professional with those guys and try not to rock the boat if you don't if you if you don't have to um, if you feel like they're, they're, you know, compromising something that you believe in, then, you know, that's something that you need to stand up for, obviously. But, like, this is all just talking about the fact that, uh, you know, these guys will come in and, under the radar, swoop in and take your spot. Now, uh, how do you prevent that type of stuff? Like I was just saying, you need to be aware of who these people are. You need to... Uh, you know, keep them at an arm's length a little bit, you know, like, like be friendly, but then like, you know, also know when to kind of cut it off as well. That's, that's really what you need to do in order to kind of just keep things, I don't know, friendly, keep, keep the, the mood, uh, mood up in a uh, light. I mean, there's, these types of people exist on all levels, whether it's uh, an A-list a level or down to just like the regular like bar level of like, gigs and stuff like that. These types of people are hungry for gigs. They have probably uh, no real responsibilities or obligations, so therefore they are completely available for uh, type of, all types of gigs and traveling. Um, as a professional musician myself, you know, when somebody comes up to me and offers me uh, a tour, says like, "Hey, I need bass. I need a bass player to go and uh, be on tour with me for two weeks." My main concern is that I'm being compensated for my time out there on the road, meaning like, all right, what am I getting per show? Am I doing my own traveling or is, are they uh, driving me? Like, am I in a van basically? Um, and is my hotel stay or like, what's my like, uh, like conditions for like uh, housing like, or lodging, if you want to call it that, like, where am I going to be staying? Am I sleeping in the back of the van or am I staying at like a holiday inn or what's going on? And am I, is that being covered? And also is there per, per DM? So days on the road where, uh, you're not gigging are you making any kind of money are you getting like fifty dollars are you getting a hundred dollars whatever your per dm might be for like getting uh food and like just like you know lively like a, a lively expense you know these are all things that come to mind so like two weeks on the road might be like at least fifteen hundred dollars or something like that like it all depends on like 
you know, the situation and how far and how long. All these things are factors and mileage, of course, especially if you're driving yourself. Like, you have to keep track of these things. You know, as a musician, like, people expect you to give things away. You can't ever give anything away. You have to always be aware of this stuff. So, um, these people, they take all that in consideration and then like sometimes they will work with you on that and they'll, they'll come back and they'll counter and then next thing you know, like, all right, cool. Like you, you sign whatever paperwork you need to sign that you agree to the terms and you're all set and you're ready to go. Now, someone who would be considered like a gig snake would be like, okay, well, what are you offering? And then the guy would be like, uh, 100 bucks a show. How many shows are you doing? Oh, we're going to do seven shows in like a two-week span. Okay, so now they got that guy for $700. No per diem, no anything. Like, he's going to make $700 and be gone for two weeks. Why? Probably because he's got no day job. Uh, he's not got, he doesn't have any real bills or anything like that. No family, just kind of like, will up and leave. So something like that is somebody that will, you know, <laughs> just uh, uh, rip the, the rug out from under your feet and now they, they're taking your spot. Is it necessarily like uh, a bad thing? Uh, it, it's It really depends how much you want that gig. If you really wanted that gig, that's a little bit of an issue. You got to kind of like work it out and you got to maybe talk to the other guy. But if you know if they were willing to like you know go with the other guy just because he was that much cheaper than you, Maybe think about your rates. Maybe think about like considering moving that around. If you can't move that, then stay strong or where you're at and just deal with the fact that you weren't available to do that gig because they weren't offering enough money. You know, if I wanted to, I could be out there on the road every freaking weekend, like traveling all over the place, not making any money, but I could be doing that. Traveling doesn't mean success. You know, success will lead to more traveling. So keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, so always keep be aware of who those people are understand that like you know you might lose opportunities because of these types of people but when that kind of stuff happens refer back to the other video of dealing with rejection be professional always move forward and look forward to the new connections and the new opportunities that are going to be, going to be coming down the line for you Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, uh, send me a message. If you like the video, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. I'll talk to you soon.